So in this video, we're just going to be taking a look at how to build a basic wheel carousel in 3JS. So we're just going to spin the images stay upright. And of course, this is 3JS, and I've just chosen uh, flat circles as the geometry. You can absolutely substitute these with spheres or whatever object you want, and the logic would still be the same. So if this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. So I have the 3JS library linked right here. We're going to start by... To normalize the page, and then we're just going to center the canvas on the page. Just going to say body, not padding. We are going to do body, margin of zero, padding of zero as well. And we're just going to center that canvas that we inject later on. So canvas, we'll say position of absolute, and we'll do a top of 50%, a left of 50% as well. We'll do a transform of a translate, negative 50%, negative 50%. All right, let's start off by setting some variables that we're going to need for the program. Let me scroll up a bit. So let's start with this. Let's start with a radius. I'll explain what these are when I use them. We'll say radius of 100. We'll say const wheel radius of 400. Let's set this to uh, image radius. Image radius 400. Let's say number of images for our wheel. We'll stick with eight right now. We'll say radian interval is just going to be equal to two times. So the circumference of a circle, two times math.pi divided by the number of images. That should be a plural. And then finally, we'll just get the center of the wheel. Center of wheel equals x of zero, y of zero. Let's create some variables for the actual scene. So let's do this. Let's go scene and ampersand objects. All right, not that. So we're gonna need a scene. It's gonna be a new three dot scene, capital S. We need a group. To group all the cards, you can see group all the cards or images, whatever you want to do. Group all the cards, that's going to be a new three dot group. We're going to need some lets. So let a loader equal null. We'll say let the texture equal null. We'll let the material equal null. What else are we going to need? Let circle equal null. And I think let mesh equal null. So we load it, we load the texture from the loader, create the material, material with the circle, circle goes with mesh, that should be good. So let's set a background color for the uh, the scene. So it's gonna be scene.background is equal to, I think it was new, three dot color, and it's just gonna be like a, a baby blue color. All right, so let's create a loop and add all of these images to the center of the uh, the canvas. Let me scroll up. So for let i is equal to zero, i is less than the number of images i plus plus. And what order are we gonna go in here? Loader, texture, material, circle, mesh. So loader is equal to new three dot texture loader. And then we're gonna get a texture from that. So texture is equal to loader dot load of an image. We're just using this image right here. So load this image. Should be obj.png. So the texture. Let's apply a, uh, a filter to that texture to, to sharpen it up. So texture.min filter is equal to three dot linear filter. So that's the loader texture. Let's move on to the material. So material is equal to new three dot mesh basic material. The texture is going to be the map, so maps equal to texture. We have a transparent of true and an opacity of one. So let's now create the circle geometry. So circle is equal to new three dot circle geometry, two parameters for this. We have the, where is it, the image radius, so it's going to be 100 by 100. And then we're going to have the number of segments. I'll show you what this means if I remember. 
when we draw this to the screen. So with the piece of geometry, we now need to merge the uh, geometry with the material in a mesh. So mesh is equal to new three dot mesh. We want the geometry and then the material for the geometry. And then mesh dot material dot side equals three dot double side. So now we need to position the images at the center of the screen. I'll get back to the actual details of it in a second. Let me just write this so I don't forget. Mesh dot position dot set. There's going to be an X, Y, and Z. So this is going to be the X with zero, Y, and Z. We're going to do some trigonometry for the X and Y. And finally, we'll do the uh, adding the uh, the card we just created, the image we just created to the group. So that'd be group cards. Yeah, there we go. Dot add. And it would be the mesh. And down here, we're just going to add the group cards to the scene. So scene.add group cards. There we go. All right, so what positions? How do we uh, actually, hmm, wondering should I show you guys this now or later? Let's keep this at zero for now, and then I'll do the trigonometry later. So we have the scene set. We have the object set. Let's set a camera. So let me do a comment down here. We'll do a camera. Let me just copy this then. Yank that, paste that down here, not there, right here. This is going to be the camera, camera, we need a field of view, we'll say 75, we need a aspect ratio, that's just going to be the, uh, we'll do width by height, the window dot inner width. By window dot inner height dot inner height inner height there we go we need a near plane 0 0.1 this is how close we can get to the actual scene we'll say a far plane how far we can move the camera back from the plane say 1000 and then we'll need the actual camera so Const camera is equal to new three dot perspective camera. And we'll go with the field of view, the aspect ratio, the near plane, the far plane. And let's set the camera back. Let's say camera dot position dot Z 1000. So that handles the camera. Let's move on to rendering the scene. So yank this, paste this down here. We'll say render. So we need a renderer, so I'm just gonna call it the renderer. So you're gonna need three dot web gl renderer. And we're gonna set the anti alias to true. Alias to true. There we go, let me scroll up. Say renderer dot set. We're gonna set the size of the renderer. So set size window dot inner width and not inner height inner width and window dot inner height inner height there we go and we're just going to set this thing to the uh, the dom so let's say document dot query selector get the body dot append child and the renderer has its dom element here renderer dot dom element and finally we need to set up that animation loop so let's do function animate we'll do that and what are we going to do here we're just going to do ba -ba 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 renderer dot render we want the scene and the camera and we need to call the request animation frame of the animate and i'll just copy and paste this outside right here all right, that should be good to go. Let's save. Let's go to our page and see what we got. And nothing's there. Why is nothing there? What do we got? Reference circles not defined. 59. Misspelled it. So 59. There we go. This should be E. Save. Go back. What else do we have? 3. Mesh is not a constructor. That should be mesh basic material. Or not mesh basic material. That should be capital M save there you go animate is not defined more spelling errors 94 animate all 
There we go. So all the images are stacked on top of one another. We're going to just fan these out in a circle around this uh, the center of the wheel. That just uh, requires a bit of trigonometry. All right, so how do we get the images to... Let me get my whiteboard up. How do we get the images to go around the circle using trigonometry? Let's see if we can draw a circle here. Ink to shape, perfect. Circle. No, circle. No, one more time. Whatever, it's good enough. So at the center of our image right here, let's say we wanted to, or a canvas, we wanted to draw an image here at 45 degree mark. How do we know what the X and the Y are? So this would be some sort of, this would be the hypotenuse. This would be the X and the Y. It's the X, the Y. We know we want to shift or place the images at 45 degree increments. This is 45 degrees, so let me just do this. So we call theta. So theta is equal to 45 degrees. Now it chooses to do the ink to shape. 45 degrees. How do we get the x and y of an angle of 45 degrees? Well, if you take the cosine, now it's doing ink to shape. Let's do this. Take off ink to shape. There we go. If you take the cosine of your 45 degree angle, this will give you the x of the triangle that makes up that 45 degree angle. If you take the sine of that same angle, 45 degrees, you get the y. So we're going to go into the code. We're going to use these two trigonometric functions, and we're going to get the x and the y for our images. So we're going to have these 0 degrees, we're going to have 45, 90, what's 90 plus 45? 135, I think, and then 180 right there, and then so on and so forth. So we'll do that here for the x. The x is just going to be equal to the center of the wheel, wherever that starts on the x, plus, and how do we get the 45? Well, how do we get the thing to go? 0, 45, 90, 135, 180. We're going to do this. We're going to have, do we have the thing here? Where is the radian interval? So radian interval times i. So i is 0. So i times your radian interval will be 0. Then when i is 1, i times your 45 degree angle will be 45. When i is 2, i times, or 2 times your 45 degree angle will be your, your 90 right here. So that's radian interval plus i, or times i, excuse me. And then we're going to multiply this by the wheel radius. Because all this math is based on a unit circle. A unit circle has one as its radius. One here would translate to one pixel on our screen, which we wouldn't be able to see. So we need to multiply that by the 400. So the wheel radius. Wheel underscore radius. And of course, this is a math function for our x. We need the cosine. Copy this here. This will be the y value. So y, we need the sine to get the y, not win. Sine, radian interval perfect, times i, times wheel radius. Let's see what we get on our page. There we go. So we have them all centered, or excuse me, uh, circling, uh, positioned around the center of the wheel. Let's do, before we get to the snap back animations, let's just animate the wheel based on the mouse. So when you scroll the mouse, the wheel will uh, rotate. So we need a listener. We'll do that right here. Render. Let's say render and listen here. Render and listen. So I'll put it down right here. We're just going to listen for document.add event listener. Listen for the wheel. We'll need the event, arrow function. Let's convert the, we're looking for a delta, I think it's delta y. So event, we'll say scroll speed. So we'll do this, let's scroll speed equal zero for now. When we get to the scroll here, we'll say scroll speed is equal to, and we'll say event dot delta, is it capital D? I think it's capital D. No, it's delta y, and we convert that excuse me, not equals, we convert it into a radian. So the radian conversion would be, what is it, 180 math.pi, math.pi over 180. And we're going to slow this whole thing down by 0 0.2. It's going to be way too uh, quickly. And now we need to scroll the, or rotate the uh, the wheel. So we're just going to do a group card. So we'll do a rotation dot Z plus equals the scroll speed. And I'm going to multiply that by negative 1. This just means that when I scroll down, the wheel is going to scroll counterclockwise. If you wanted to scroll clockwise, when you scroll down, just omit the uh, the negative one. So let me loop through all of the 
Should I do this now? Actually, no. Let me show you guys first and I'll tell you why. I'll show you why we need the next three lines. So we go back here, I scroll down, and notice the images are going upside down when the wheel's upside down. You want to rotate the images, not the wheel, but in the but the images in the opposite direction of the wheel until the, the images stay upright. So we just need a small for loop here. For let i is equal to zero, i is less than group cards dot children dot length do an i plus plus and then we'll just go through all the cards so group cards dot children i same thing rotation dot z is equal to actually plus equal to that's scroll speed and we want it in the opposite direction of the of the wheel so we don't need the negative one so let me save that so now when we scroll the images stay upright and let me show you what I promised to show you earlier on in the video, which was the segments of the wheel. So 100 segments of a, a wheel or 360 degrees gives you the smooth, the smooth uh, circumference or smooth shape. If we did segments of I don't know, eight saved, we'd get eight segments here. So that's all the segment or the second um, uh, argument of the circle geometry is it sets the the number of segments of your circle. So let me put that back up to 100. Save. Let me zoom back out. So there you go. That's the the basic uh, 3JS um, wheel carousel. We're doing a follow-up video where I convert this guy to the advanced. So when we scroll to a certain snapping point, or when we scroll and we stop, if there's a snapping point here, the wheel will automatically rotate itself here. This image will grow, the rest will shrink, and that'll be that video. Anyways, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next one.